Hi guys, Martin here, True North Ministry. Welcome with me, speaking on the biblical trees of the Old Testament. And there are so many, and everyone has specific use for specific purpose. And um, um, I just felt led by the Holy Spirit to talk about that, because um, we can learn from it. And um, actually when Old Testament prophets would say and speak of trees, they um, spoke actually of men. And um, it is character um, things of the tree and that we need to know and we need to focus on that and um, have that same purpose. And this morning I want to speak to you on the myrtle tree now it's not only the myrtle tree i'm just going to bring maybe the palm um, tree with because this tree speaks of celebration um you remember when jesus came in on the donkey in jerusalem and they took a uh, palm trees you know and um a palm tree is always a signal and a symbol of celebration and um Yes, so it's awesome to know that um, when you are in a desert and you see uh, oases, you know, there's water, there's always palm trees. So you are happy to see this plant, a uh, palm tree. But um, I'm not going to focus on it, but you can use and speak also on that um, with the myrtle tree because they are walking so close together because the myrtle tree is um, also speaking of celebration and what an awesome um, tree so i'm going to speak to you and by now you know that i um, use old testament scriptures and prophetic words to explain things and if you have your bible you may turn with me first of all to isaiah 41 verse 19 yes so I want you to hear the specific words and understand when prophets wrote, um, they want to say something. And um, they will say in verse 19, Isaiah uh, 41 says, I will plant in the wilderness a cedar, the Lord says, and the acacia, the myrtle, we are speaking of this awesome tree, the myrtle tree, and the wild olive. I will set a cypress in the desert, the plane tree and the pine tree together. So what is, the, what is this purpose now of this prophet trying to say of all these kinds of trees that the Lord will put together? There must be something special about it because God will send the prophet and says, you write this down. It's so important. It's in the word of God. So it's not really about um, the natural tree. It is the different trees. That's the, the, the thing. And every tree stands for something. All right. I will put it together. That men may see and know and consider and understand together. They must understand. Who must consider and understand men? Consider Together, together means they are the trees in this garden that the Lord has planted in the wilderness. All right. And now maybe you are a pine tree, maybe you are a cedar, and maybe you are a kasha, or maybe you are a myrtle tree. All right. But they must consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. So we will look to each other and say, well, this guy is totally different from me but me and him are in the kingdom of God we are both so in the kingdom of God and part of the body of Christ but we are different all right so we must understand and consider it's not about one tree it's not about when when Jesus spoke of the Jewish people, he will come and say they are an olive branch and he will take them out, you know, because they do not recognize him and he will plant a wild olive. 
or right into him. And we know that's the heathen people. So we must understand what God is saying, that we must understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. Then Isaiah 55 verse 12, I'm going to read that as well in verse 13. Isaiah, he was one of the most awesome prophets that was giving much more clarity um, in his prophetic words than any other prophets. Many prophets would come and actually just opening the word for Israel or the people that God sent them to. But Isaiah was one that was more specific. He wrote uh, the detail of things and that's why he's so awesome prophet. He says, verse 12, For ye shall go out with joy, you shall go out with joy, and let forth with peace. Listen, you will go out with joy. So what is a myrtle tree and a palm tree? It is celebration. All right? For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Very important. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. So the mountains and <laughs> the hills is not natural mountain and hill. It is the mountains and the hills. It's people, all right, specific things of people. So, and the mountains and the hills will break forth before you into singing. It's men that will sing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And all the few trees, all the trees, all these trees that are spoken of, uh, the Lord is creating in this garden, the pine and the myrtle and the cedar and the kasha wood. All right, it says, they will clap their hands. What is their hands? Their hands is the leaves. What is this leaves <laughs> of the trees that will clap their hands with joy? Um, let's go on. Instead of the thorn, shall come up the fir tree. All right. And instead of the briar, shall come up the myrtle tree. Now, this fir tree is a thorn. All right. And this um, um, briar is also a thorn bush tree. All right. Instead of the thorn, shall come up the fir. Sorry. <laughs> the fir. <laughs> I'm wrong there. The fir is the good tree. All right. And a state of the briar, it's a thorny, bushy tree, shall come up the myrtle tree. Now, there's something about the myrtle tree that we need to understand, and that's going to be awesome. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Cut off. A tree can be cut off. But this shall happen where the thorn, what is that? Where the sinner is thorn. All right, and is this thorn and briar trees? It's unrighteous people. They will be taken out, and the fir tree will rise, and the myrtle tree will come up, and it will not be cut off, and that will be a sign for the Lord. Oh boy, we will be a sign for the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a myrtle tree, and if you are not a myrtle tree, you must become a myrtle tree for him. Zechariah 1 verse 8. Zechariah had the vision, and I'm going to read that to you as well, so that you can see myrtle trees in the Old Testament, and it speaks of something. All right, first of all, I say the Hebrew word for myrtle is um, hadas. All right, hadas is the Hebrew word for myrtle tree, and it speaks of celebration. So they use Palms and myrtle trees for celebrations. All right. I saw Zechariah 1 verse 8. I saw in the night vision and behold a man riding upon a red horse. All right. So red's not good. And he stood among the myrtle trees. One that rides on a red horse <laughs> and stood among the myrtle trees. So the myrtle trees, not acacia trees. The myrtle tree, so we need to understand why the myrtle trees. That they um, stood among the myrtle trees that were in a low valley. 
all right so people that's in a low valley is valley is not a good place because it's where death is the shadow you know of death as we went through the valleys you know lord bring us to a higher place to the mountain all right so and um, it says it was in a low valley or on the bottom and behind them there were horses a man on a red horse and behind them there were horses these horses are men all right red by or flame colored and white then i say oh my lord what are these and the angel who talked with me said i will show you what these are verse 10 and the man, man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said these are they whom the lord have sent to walk to and throw through the earth all right what is this man on the red horse and why red horse and what is these horses next to me oh they are those who are sent into the earth but it's among the myrtle trees all right and it says and they answered and the angel of the lord stood among the myrtle trees and they answered the angel of the lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said we have walked to and fro the earth and behold all the earth set of still and is at rest all right so there is a very important thing that you need to know so first of all celebration celebration speaks all right very i hope it's spelled right and then it sits still so it speaks of peace all right it speaks of peace it's a place of peace myrtle tree speaks of celebration it's a place we celebrate now we are not in war we are not fighting but we are in a place of peace so it says and um they answer that who is they the horses that were with the man who sat on the red horse they answered the angel of the lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said we have walked to and fro the earth oh we walk to and fro the earth what is the myrtle trees it's the earth who is the earth it's the people but it's the specific people all right we have walked to and fro through the earth and behold all the earth set of still so all the earth they are at peace and is at rest then the angel of the lord answered and said o lord of hosts how long will they not have mercy on jerusalem and on the cities of judah so who is the myrtle trees where the the man who sits on a red horse it is jerusalem and judah all right jerusalem jerusalem and judah speaks of the people of god it speaks of the people of god all right now the angel of the lord answered and said o lord of hosts this is the man who sit on the red horse he says to this man how long will thou not have mercy will thou not have mercy on jerusalem and on the cities of judah against which thou hast indignation that means wrath why is he sitting on a red horse because a red horse speaks of wrath all right anger but the lord have mercy on on this people judah and jerusalem who is this myrtle trees all right and it says against which thou has indignation these three scroll score and ten years all right so i hope you can understand the symbolic image and meaning of this man who was on a red horse between myrtle trees the trees of prophetic words is not natural trees and that's why we need to understand it but it was not amongst akasha wood and it was not amongst um the cedars of lebanon and it was not um uh, now uh, talking about hisop the insignificance of hisop but the awesomeness what, when it was used it needed to be dipped in blood um 
It's not about that. It is now about celebration and a place of peace and stillness and celebration. The myrtle. All right. Nehemiah 8 verse 14 and 15. My two last scriptures. And then I'm just going to speak to you a little bit. Nehemiah 8 verse 14 and 15. It's Old Testament prophet. All right. It's not at the end, it's more the beginning of the prophets. <laughs> and they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded through Moses. Okay, Nehemiah took the Bible or the word or the law of Moses and he's going to read it now. That the Israelites should dwell in booths during the feast of the seventh month. All right, so. When we speak of the myrtle tree, we must understand about the feast. And there were seven feasts, all right. And the last feast, all right, was the Feast of Tabernacles. So I'm going to write this down, Tabernacles. It's not the tabernacle that Moses built, but it was Tabernacles of trees, that Israel had to build for them as they moved through the desert. All right. And this must come in the seventh month. You know my sermon about the seventh month, people? Go and see that as well because it's fit nicely together with this. All right. So it says, and, and they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded through Moses. All right that Israel should dwell in booths or tents, all right, during the feast of the seventh month. What is the, se the feast of the seventh month? It is the, the, the feast of tabernacles. Now, it started off by the feast of trumpets. So, first of all, there is trumpet sound. In the seventh month, the, the, the fifth, six, and seven, yeah, uh, uh, Feast is going together, all right. The first four is going together because this is the first, and uh, in the Israel year, it's the first month. Then there's a little bit wait, and then there is three feasts, all right. So it starts off with trumpets. Trumpets is always blowing, there is something to be declared, there is a celebration that is going to happen, all right. And um, then uh, it is the oneness. You remember the, the Feast of Atonement? Oneness? Oh boy, that's awesome. When do you get one with somebody? When you are intimate with one. When can you be intimate with one? When you are married. All right. When there is a wedding feast. So I believe the wedding feast that people wait for is actually your born again experience because I am one with the Lord and you can only be one with the Lord when you are intimate and you are one with him. So you are the woman and the bride of Christ. And it's a wedding feast now as we walk on this earth in this kingdom. So trumpets must be blown and oneness must come. And then the tabernacle, the, the dwelling places of booths must happen. And that booths were built. All right, verse 5, 15. I hope you understand what I'm saying, and I'm not too forced. All right, verse 15 says, Nehemiah 8, verse 15. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their towns and Jerusalem, saying, go out to the hills and bring branches of olive. All right? Wild olive, all right? So this tabernacles is a tent that needed to be built, all right? And use these trees. Now, all these trees as something in connection with each other, all right? Bring olives, and I'm not going to speak about that because we speak about the myrtle, myrtle tree. But bring olives, wild olives, myrtle, there's that word, palm and other leafy trees to make booths 
as it is written. All right, so I want you to build. Now, according to Jewish uh, traditions, they use mostly the myrtle tree because it is leafy and stuff. All right, but there was also olive and palm. Now, all of these trees have something. All right, all of them. I know you know there is oil. They have oil glands in their um, bark, in their uh, leaves, oily. So they are evergreen trees. Evergreen, you must understand this tree, is evergreen, mean, meaning there is always life. But all of them are full of oil. So they can take olive trees, branches, the, the, the myrtle, and the palm, when they crash it, there's oil. You know when you look to a palm tree, the leaves is full of oil glands. All right, so it speaks of life. It's evergreen, all right? It is ever full of life. It is full of oil that speaks of the anointing. The anointing. The anointing is the Spirit of God that's upon us. All right, because we are not talking about now, natural trees only, we speak of men that are still in at peace because they are already one with God. All right. And they are one. Why are they one? Because they are married. They are in a celebration. It is leaves that are used for celebration. Do not use other tree palms, uh, other leaves now, use the palm, speaks of celebration. You are at the wedding. And that's why the Jewish people will always use at wedding feast the myrtle tree. Because of the shiny on the trees, it is evergreen. The oil, it speaks of blessings. It speaks of Holy Spirit anointing. It speaks of success. It speaks of joy. We have come to the place where we need to come. And that's why this man sit on a red horse. He has anger, but he's amongst the myrtle trees. All right, the myrtle, because there's peace in them. But now, if we go further with this man, this man says, I had war in my heart because the fathers did not turn to my, to my words. But, I'm going to make you blessing. I'm coming back to Jerusalem and I'm going to do something where you will be full of oil and in a place of rest again where this hard red war indignation in my heart, this red horse will be cancelled out. All right? But I'm not talking now about that. I'm talking about this myrtle trees that speaks of celebration uh, it is Jerusalem and Judah at peace in the last feast that they had to do as a celebration of their oneness with the Lord and God. And they are full of anointing. They are at rest. They are full of oil and full of life. I hope you can see it. Oh, this is so beautiful for me. All right. And he says, and they shall publish and proclaim in all the towns and in Jerusalem, saying, Go out to the hills and bring branches of olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy trees to make booths at ease, as it is written. Now, just let me go and see here uh, something that I must not miss. All right. It's evergreen, and this plant has an awesome fragrance. All right, evergreen, um, myrtle tree, uh, it has a fragrance of fresh scent. It's fresh scent. So other trees has another scent, but this one has a fresh scent. All right, place it with what you know about people. All right, and God is doing something new. There's a fresh scent. They are shiny, oily. Or, or, they are full of anointing, these people. 
Right. Now, what I can say is their um, flower is white, starry. All right. Their flower is white, starry flowers, the myrtle tree. And when they built these booths, they used this at the top of the tent or the booth. So when they look up, they could see this white, starry uh, flowers. All right. So um, what it says to me is there was a prophetic word many years ago to Abram where God would say, I will make your people like the stars of the heavens. They will shine. So I believe when they look up in this booth, they see this white flower and, and, and Jewish um, people say it's true that when they look up to it, they see the white flowers and it looks like stars and they would remember that they would be the, like stars of the heaven. They would be like stars for God, white and shine forth among the nations. All right. So that is awesome. Another thing of this myrtle tree is what I like it. They say it is almost like I all have the fruit of it. So they could have eat of the myrtle fruit. And it's almost like the olive. So when I heard that, <laughs> the Jewish people say it's almost like the olive. I remember that Jesus Christ says, I'm the great olive that needs to be crushed. You remember in the tabernacle, the olives needs to be crushed. Then oil needs to come out that was used in the menorah, the, the, the seven candle, uh, the candle, you know, so it must burn. That is the Holy Spirit, the life. Life will come out of him if it's crushed. Where Gethsemane is, uh, is, is the place called the place of olives crushed. All right, that word Gethsemane means olive crushed. Who was the olive? Jesus is the olive and he's full of oil. All right, and it's crushed. But this myrtle tree, its fruit is almost like olives and it is full of oil and they could have eaten it. And they need to use this. And they did use this myrtle tree to build booths where they indwell in the, as they moved in the desert. All right. So I believe that Jesus Christ is the olive tree. And we are the myrtle trees. We are almost like the olive tree. And we are full of oil and full of life. And we can be crushed. When you take a myrtle tree, you can crush him and you can also use it for many medical purposes. All right. And um, it always, it's all, also like the hyssop of last week. Um, it will take everything that is bad inside of you when you have cough or what infections you have, it will bring out. All right. So this anointing oil will help you to get all the parasites and the sin out. Because God says, I will make the, the, the thorn bush, I will make a fir tree. And I will take this, um, what is that tree's name? Breerer or something like that. I will make it a myrtle tree. I will take the thorns out. I will take the unrighteous people out. I will take the sin out. And I will put righteousness on earth. And I will put a monk, in this garden, all these different kinds of, of uh, trees. And maybe you are one tree, but you need to be all of these trees in uh, once or specific purposes. All right. Remember, the cedar of Lebanon was great trees. You must come and stretch far, you know. And then the olive tree was full of oil, full of anointing. And this... God is saying this morning, you need to stay in a myrtle tree. You need to use the myrtle tree as a dwelling place. It is full of joy. It is full of peace. It is full of stillness. There is no war. There is oneness already when you know the myrtle tree 
there is already oneness already because you went through the first four feasts already. You remember the, 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 the feast of the, um, Pentecost and um, yes, the first four. But the last three speaks of tabernacles. You will stay in this place of peace where you can eat and join to the Lord and be in a celebration. So when Jesus was on earth, we knew that in his time, in his three and a half years of time, they did the four feasts. All right. And then it end of by the fourth is the feast of Pentecost. And then Jesus was gone up in heaven. So many people are waiting for the three feasts to come naturally. But that feast is actually now a spiritual thing that we need to do. It is proclaim the trumpets. Come in oneness. All right. And not only in oneness, but stay in booths where you are the booth. All right. Where you become the star, where you become the almost olive like fruit, where people can eat of you, where you become the life, because the hills of the hill will clap their hands. <laughs> The trees of the field will clap their hands. Who's the trees? It's you. Will clap their hands for joy. And I will place all these trees so that they can understand that I am the Lord. Put all these different trees together in the kingdom of God. And there's no wrath in God anymore. He says to you, come and eat of me. Be one with me. Come. Be part of this feast. Be, do all of them spiritually and understand that you can become the booth, the dwelling place and the oneness of God on this earth, the representation of the Lord Jesus Christ and where you bring now a stillness and a peace to war and where the thorns amongst you become also myrtle trees. Blessed and celebration, a time of celebration. I've tried my best to uh, explain to you, and um, I think we are finished with this series. There is a little bit more other trees, but um, I think it was 13 or 14 trees that we already spoken on. And um, I want you to write to me or give me something on youtube or on facebook if you can say how this series has blessed you and um, it has blessed me tremendously and i want to be a kosher i want to be a murder i want to be a hisop i want to be a um whatever <laughs> tree i want to be a palm tree for the lord jesus christ and celebrate in his glory and i believe you as well so be blessed in jesus mighty name amen and amen